Hello, my name is Matthew Hunter with Legacy Wilderness Academy, and I'm on a mission to document every edible and medicinal plant in the southeastern U.S. so Southerners can have greater access to nutritious food and free medicine. In this video, we're going to be looking at an antihistamine herb used for treating seasonal allergy symptoms. So anything from pollen allergies to dust allergies, pet allergies, or allergic asthma. Anytime you have an itchy, runny nose, scratchy throat, watery, itchy eyes, this plant is going to help and it's found in the most unlikely of places in fact you're already familiar with this plant and you're going to have a hard time believing what i'm about to tell you the plant we're going to be looking at in this video is the common ragweed now hear me out even if you're totally torn up by ragweed pollen in the summer and fall months the leaves can still be used because it's the pollen that's the allergen not the leaves so even if you're allergic to the pollen it's highly unlikely that you would be allergic to the leaves of the plant itself so if we harvest the leaves before the pollen appears, then we can have a homemade antihistamine medicine ready for when the pollen does appear. In this video, we'll look at how to identify two species of ragweed that are common and widespread throughout the southeastern U.S. We'll talk about their medicinal uses a little bit more, and I'll show you how to prepare them into a medicine. But before we begin, I'll quickly mention that if you want to learn more about medicinal plants of the southeast, make sure that after this video, you download my free guide to medicinal plants, which you can find in the link in the description below this video. There are about 23 species of ragweed in the United States. They're also known as bursages occasionally, and they're in the genus Ambrosia. And so all of the different species of Ambrosia are generally considered to be used similarly. There's two species that are common and widespread throughout the southeast, and the first we'll look at is a plant which you see here, the giant ragweed, or Ambrosia trifida, or trifida. And that species name, trifida, means split into three parts, or threefold. And it's a reference to the leaves, which are often three-lobed, as you can see here. Now, there is some variability in the leaves. They can be three-lobed, they can have, have no lobes, or occasionally on the larger plants, they'll also be five-lobed. So you can see all three on the same uh, plant. And so uh, ragweed has really, really tough stems. First of all, this plant is extremely tall. This thing, this thing can grow to like over nine feet tall. It can grow really, really tall. That's why it's called giant ragweed. And the stems have these tough bristly hairs, as you can see here. They also have an opposite leaf arrangement and sort of branching pattern. And so this plant is uh, easily recognized by its real uh, rough bristly stems. If you feel the stem, it's really rough and bristly. And then those three lobe leaves make it really distinct. The plant also has a distinct smell. You can sort of learn to recognize ragweeds by their smell. Sometimes it'll be really strong, almost like a camphor type smell. And then the flowers, which are not shown here, are produced around mid to late summer. And uh, they, will, they will be in spikes of green flowers. The flowers don't have any petals. So it's mostly just like little pollen sacs that are produced. And uh, that is how to identify the giant ragweed. The next species we'll look at is the common ragweed, which looks totally different than the giant ragweed, but is very closely related. It's Ambrosia artemisifolia, and that species name artemisifolia is a reference to the genus Artemisia, the sages and mugworts, um, because this plant bears a resemblance to that genus. You can see that the leaves have a sort of feathery or fern-like appearance. They can almost be mistaken for something like a wild carrot or maybe even a poison hemlock. So I'll just quickly show you some of the distinct identification features of this plant. One of the important features for common ragweed is that the stems are very hairy. You'll also notice that the leaves are usually opposite, which you can see here. They come out at the same place along the stem, opposite each other. However, further up near the top of the plant, they will often be alternately arranged. And one of the important things you're looking at here is that where the leaves attach to the stem, there is no enlargement or flare or anything like that. So in plants of the carrot family, like wild carrot or poison water hemlock or, or poison hemlock, whatever it is, they are usually, um, they have like a swollen base. So the leaves often will have sort of this swollen base or almost like a flare where the leaf attaches to the main stalk. And as you can see, that is totally absent on the common ragweed. Next, let's talk medicinal uses. Ragweed is an effective and fast-acting antihistamine or antihistamine-like herb that's used for seasonal allergies, for pollen, dust allergies, pet allergies, allergic asthma. It can also even be used for things like allergic reactions to um, insect bites 
or to uh, like food allergies. Now, keep in mind though, this is not going to be a plant used for severe allergic reactions or anaphylaxis. It's not a powerful enough herb to be able to use in a life-threatening situation. So if you have a like serious peanut allergy, or if you're allergic to bees and you uh, are at risk of anaphylaxis, this is not gonna be the plant that you wanna use for that purpose. Also keep in mind that you know ragweed can actually be drying to the sinuses. It's very good for watery eyes or a runny nose, something like that. But some people may actually find that if your nose is already super, super dry and it's like in pain, uh, that the ragweed is, may dry it out even further and uh, make the condition worse. But it's still worth trying out because of its antihistamine effects. Uh, it's worth experimenting with in this regard. Lastly, the plant can be used for allergic skin reactivity as well, like hives, which is how it was used by the Cherokee. And to do that, you would just make a tea of the plant and use it as a wash. So the second medicinal use of ragweed is as an antispasmodic. And what that means is that it reduces muscle spasms or cramps. So this plant has been used for um, leg cramps, it's been used for gastrointestinal or stomach cramps, and it's also been used for menstrual cramps. And so that is a sort of a secondary use for the plant. It is mild in its action, but um, Native American tribes from all around have used various species for that, and it was used that way in uh, Southern folk medicine. And so it can also be used for that purpose. And so next we're gonna look at how to prepare a medicine with ragweed. You can make a tea or, or a tincture. And so for the tea, you will just be using uh, pretty much any amount you wanna use. It's a very, very safe plant. Now, some people may be allergic to ragweed leaves, but it's extremely rare. The professional herbalist Seven Song said that he's given this plant to so many people over the years, and he knew of only four people that had a bad reaction to the leaves. So if you are going to be using a tea of this plant, you can pretty much use any amount you want, kind of experiment. I mean, I'll just take like a handful of leaves and throw in a pot of water and then drink maybe a coffee cup or teacup size, and that's going to be uh, effective. Uh, but you know, you may want to start with just a little sip first, see how it treats you. And with the tincture, which I'm going to show you how to make next, you may just want to try like one single drop first. And if one drop doesn't give you, uh, you know, make your allergy symptoms worse or give you any type of bad reaction, then you should be able to use a pretty large amount uh, of this plant as far as the tincture goes. But we'll talk about that in the next scene. So we're going to be making a tincture of the plant. All we're going to do is be tearing up some of this ragweed, putting it into a jar, and then covering it to the top with 190 proof or 95% pure grain alcohol or Everclear. Here I have an off-brand Everclear that we'll be using. And uh, once it's done, I'll show you, and it's going to be very, very simple. So I'm just adding stems and all to this jar, and we're going to pack it pretty tightly once it's all in there. All right, now we'll go ahead and cover it with alcohol. Again, this is 190 proof or 95% pure grain alcohol. And you can use really whatever strength you have. Some people ask if they can use something a little bit weaker. That's about enough and I'll go ahead and probably push it down. It just needs to cover it, so I'll push it down. And then this is gonna sit for about two weeks. And once this is done, we'll strain it. And I will use about three dropperfuls or 90 drops if the allergy symptoms are really acute. Uh, but typically, so after maybe that first high dose, maybe 15 to 30 drops throughout the day. And this is again one you can, I would say, do larger doses of. It's uh, very safe. I consider it a very safe plant. And like I said, you may want to do just one drop first just to make sure, 100% sure that you're not allergic to the leaves, but most people are not. And then uh, as long as you're not allergic to that one drop, then you should be good to go. And that's how I will do that. All right, guys, this one was really short and sweet. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you're going to get the benefit of using this wonderful antihistamine plant. Again, my name is Matthew Hunter with Legacy Wilderness Academy. I hope you have a great day.